This is a Bear Tooth Podcast. Bringing today's news affecting real life issues on relationships, community, family, and faith. Join Alexander each week as he brings truth into your lives one day at a time. Alexander is a certified relationship and mental health coach through the Association of Christian Counselors. Here is the host of the Bear Truth Podcast. Please welcome Alexander. Hey everyone, I want to welcome you guys to the Bear Truth Podcast this morning. Obviously, today is the 7th and good things are happening this morning i'm pretty excited i got to have the opportunity to bring on a guest today obviously every day i'm excited because when you get to bring on people who are doing that means that impacts are happening around you and so i'm excited anytime i get to see individuals making differences in lives in the communities, in the workplaces. And so I'm about helping people who help people. Because one of the things we have a lack of today is having individuals in our lives that we should be supporting and helping. So I want to, first of all, welcome our guest, Joyce Williams. She runs a show on YouTube, and her goal is to help women find their voice. And the Invisible Woman show on YouTube, uh, she is, again, her main mission is to help women find their voice in a place where she herself had felt invisible. So, Joyce, I want to welcome you to the Bear Truth Podcast. Thank you so much for having me here. It is a pleasure to be here. I love being um, supportive. And like you were saying about um, you love working with others who are you know, active in the community of helping others. And I, I'm passionate about that as well. So just re- I, I want you to say, uh, for, so when, to get started, all those who follow the show, my podcasts are not scripted they are not uh we don't go into a night production the night before everything is live and so i've had very i had i have had not an opportunity to sit down with joyce so and i do this deliberately joyce because i want people to understand that it's it's good to be who we are it's good to be who we are and I want you just to relax and have a good time. And more importantly, just know that we're, we're literally on the same mindset in helping people. That, so I'm, I'm excited about that. So let me ask you, Joyce, uh, first of all, a little bit about yourself. Why, why don't you tell the listeners uh where you're from and a little bit about yourself okay so i am originally from louisiana a small town that um let me put it on the map bastrop louisiana um right outside of monroe is northeast louisiana and i am living currently living in texas um let's see i have three beautiful children teenagers and i have a husband and i just I'm really just working towards my goal of empowering women. That is just my, what I'm passionate about, what I'm trying to do. And uh, and I know you said your show is not scripted. My show is not scripted either. I, I don't do a night before, let's you know rehearse this, this is what's gonna happen. No, I just go for it and let's just do it. <laughs> so I'm very comfortable, thank you. 
Yeah, and and I think it's it's important for people to understand that, um, you know, the the good thing about connecting with people that are doing great things is that you also know that it can be a challenge in today's world uh, to find people with the common goal of success. And so I want to, I went on to your website. I went on to your website, the invisible woman talk show. So, uh, let me, let me read you guys, the listeners, uh, her vision. She said, I know how it feels like to be unseen. You work hard and nobody seems to notice. I understand what it's like to be overlooked and undervalued. Yes, you can be a mother, grandmother, sister, and friend, but who are you without the title? Somewhere in your life, you lost you. You may be you still haven't found yourself yet. My goal is to help women find their voice. I want to help you find your own identity. And if you find your voice, join me in helping other women find theirs. We're stronger together. And I, 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 th- I loved your vision. Let me say that. I, I, I think yeah. transparency is something we have a hard time doing sometimes. So let me ask you, Joyce, with the show Invisible Woman, tell me how long has this been constructing in your mind? Oh, my gosh. So I've always been a helper of others. You know, I've always, you know, I'm a giving person. I have a giving spirit. I have a big heart. Anybody that knows me know I'm like that. And it just seems like, um, I, like I said, I found myself being underappreciated, overlooked, devalued. And I just thought to myself, and once I was able to come out of that, once I overcame that, I just thought, let me go back and help other people too, you know, and specifically women, because I'm a woman, I can speak for women because I am a woman, I can relate. You know, so that's why it was more, you know, that's why it's geared toward women because I can relate to women, you know, and, and so it was, um, it just took me, it wasn't a long time that I just thought I I just, that I just sat on it and thought about it. I immediately sprang into action. I was like, okay, I know what I want to do. And this is the goal. This is the vision. Let's make it happen. Because I know me, if I procrastinate, it'll never get done. Like I'll put it off and put it out and put it off. So when, as soon as it came to me, I was like, let me spring into action. And there it was. <laughs> started. It, awesome. So let me, let me ask you this. Uh, you had said something, uh, a, a word that I see a lot of the time. And it's procrastination. Uh, let me ask you this, how much from your viewpoint or your opinion, do you think procrastination is caused by lack of support? I think that, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to say that I, I did that too. When I, I told somebody my vision and I wanted their help, they were very excited about it. It was just like, okay, I'm on board. I'm on board. And I was like, okay, great. Let's make this happen. And then they um, did something, you know, to, they did uh, something for me to, you know, kind of like, okay, let me know that they're interested, which I was excited about it. I was like, oh, let's, you know, let's do this. But then when it came down to, I'm ready to do the show, I saw them cool off. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to put this off a little bit longer to give you more time to get, you know, your situation together so we can do this together. So I did that because I was, it was actually supposed to come out like around, um, what's that Memorial, not Memorial, Labor Day, Labor Day. It was supposed to launch Labor Day. 
Okay. And so it didn't because I put it off to wait on somebody else. And then that's when I realized I was like, wait a minute. No, this is my baby. This is my vision. So I cannot sit there, sit it on a shelf and wait on somebody else. Let me go and make it happen. So I decided I was like, with or without the support, I'm going to do it. And, well, and that I, was it. Well, I applaud you uh, for having the courage to overcome uh, and making the choice to go ahead and, and pursue the very thing that you believe that you had already been wanting to do re with or without anybody. So mm -hmm. that's a difficult, let me tell you what, uh, making a choice to move ahead in spite of what people see your vision or maybe it's a business and moving forward regardless of support that's a real that's a real moment in people's lives yeah and i and i think that 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 right there is it takes courage doesn't it it does and you you know i'm not going to say that i didn't have like family supporting me. What I'm saying is that I didn't have the, I don't, I don't, I'm not tech savvy. I don't know all about the production behind the scenes of how to make things work. And so I needed, at least I thought I needed somebody in that expertise to get it started, to help me get it started. But you know, I didn't. And so it was just a cell phone and a ring light. And I was like, actually, I don't even think I know. I didn't have a ring light the first show. It was just a cell phone. I was like, you know what? Let's just do it. I didn't have a guest. I didn't have anything. And I asked my daughter last minute. I said, hey, daughter, you want to do this with me? That's why, I, you know, the first one is, you know, you can tell it's a little darker. It's my introduction until I'm still going to make this happen. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I asked my daughter last minute. I was like, hey, will you be on my show with me? And she was like, yeah. And she, you know, immediately got up and she did it with me and we did it. And I was like, okay, it's done. Awesome. <laughs> so that was that. That, that is awesome. Let me, t let me tell you what, well, let me tell you what, over here, uh, in our studio, uh, I can tell you everything is done by myself. Uh, everything that I had to research was done by myself. Uh, you know, we, we don't realize that sometimes we procrastinate because we have to have things perfect. And I would, I would tell anyone, listen, guys, just get started. Just exactly. get started. Don't worry about the perfection because if you do, you'll never get it off the ground. And so uh, I'm thankful that my wife, you know, I have my wife on my, uh, 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 as a support, right? But right. when it comes to everyday people, right, I know what it's like to start something and have nobody in our corner. That's a real, that's a real emotional deal and i don't think we talk about the emotional side of lack of support and then having to heal from um because i believe a lot of times when we get wounded uh it takes time for us to heal and try again and so so let me ask you if you don't mind me asking so uh where 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 do you want to see this show go to i my vision is different countries you know have it uh in different languages it's just um mainstream i just really want to get it out there to make it as big as i can, actually bigger than i can imagine you know, uh, because it's, you know, like you were talking about the support. I actually, the last episode I did was about um, support. It was Lift Me Up. And it was about uh, supporting, you know, each other and ways that we can support each other and not, you know, um, once you've made it or once you've gotten some knowledge about how to do something, you know, share that. 
because a lot of times we're uh, jealous or we're selfish and we don't, we're inconsiderate of other people. We're thinking, oh, if I tell them this, they're going to surpass me, you know, but it's not, it shouldn't be like that. We should always be wanting to help one another to see each other succeed. And that's just, you know, a sisterhood um, and not just, you know, women, but I just think that resonates, should resonate with everybody. Help somebody because somebody is going to help you in return. At least, you know, they want to. Yeah. And I, I, I believe that, um, uh... It's it's one of those things when I look at what you're doing. Um, it's it's one of those things. The reason why I wanted to really bring you onto the podcast again is because I saw your heart. Uh, I I do my homework. Uh, I do my diligence when I look in bringing people on regardless of their credentials Mm -hmm. because see a lot of times we base what we will and will not do based off what we believe is if that person is qualified right right and so much of the time we bypass gifted people because of a piece of paper that is true. And so I've learned in my life that I don't care about the credentials. I care about the will. I care about the passion. I care about the motivation, commitment. Because those things you cannot get off of a piece of paper with credentials that has to be that has to be already engrafted into the individual so when i saw you i saw these great qualities and your heart and your will and your passion and that is why i wanted to bring you on the show Thank you so much. That that means a lot. And um, to see that what I'm doing resonates off of the screen, you know, you can actually see the uh, the work that I put into it, the passion that's coming out of it. That means a lot. So thank you so much. And thank you for choosing me to be on this show. So I really appreciate that. So I, I appreciate the support. I appreciate you, you know, seeing something in me. So thank you so much for that. Well, I don't monkey around on this show. There, there, this is the bare truth show. So I tell everybody, listen, uh, one thing I've learned is you're not going to please everybody. And you have to be bold in what you believe in. You have to stand on the principles and the values in your life as an individual and know that you are going to make some people happy and you're going to make some people mad because truth does two things. Either you run away from it or you run to it. And so let me ask you this, uh, Joyce, uh, your platform, uh, what do you see, what is you, let me ask you this, what is your viewpoint on multiculture? Um, are you asking me, am I trying to reach a certain yeah, I mean, is, is your show about, is it a multicultural show? I mean, regardless what woman you are, I mean, is, is that, you see that vision coming into play off of your show? Definitely. My show is not uh, based on race, but it is predominantly based on gender. So I am trying to reach every woman. And so, uh, as you said that, you know, sometimes the show doesn't resonate with everybody, but you know, if you 
if you if it you know if one of the episodes you like you know I, I always say like and share and you know make sure that other women you know know about the show as well you know you don't want to keep something good to yourself but yeah it's not based on uh, race or anything like that so I want okay. to reach everybody. Well, I and I applaud you. Can I can I applaud you and and tell you that I appreciate. I appreciate. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Everybody's clapping on that one. <laughs> everybody appreciates when everybody can be recognized. Yeah. And I, uh, a little bit, you know, for those who, who know me, they know that I'm a big support, a supporter in multicultural because there are gifts from every culture. There's challenges from every culture. And sometimes we don't address the challenges and then how do we overcome the challenges when we face various different challenges from different cultures. So I, I appreciate that you have that as an importance because I think that regardless of what culture you come from, we all want to be valued. We all want to be accepted uh, that's God's engrafted element in what he put in us is to be wanted. So uh, how long did you go, Joyce, uh, in feeling that you were invisible? <laughs> wow, good question. And I would say decades. I mean, it was a long time, like years and years. And then it was, yeah, it was a long time. It was just recently, I would say within the past two years that I started finding myself. I, I was lost. I didn't even know who I was because I took on the identity of someone else. And I took on the identity of what people told me I was versus who I am. And so, yeah, it, it took me, I would say the last couple of years is when I really started becoming me. Well, I mean, let me ask you, do you, do you believe that's uh, now for me, I, I look at you, I've worked with various different cultures from Hispanic to, to African uh, American, to uh, Caucasian, to uh, African, to Asian. I, I've worked with every type of, a lot of nationalities in my life in in leadership and i can tell you that there are some things that i look at some cultures as in challenging uh and i would say from my experience as counseling individuals that in the african uh american community i think self-identity is a challenge uh, finding who we are is a challenge uh, in in the African American, and and then uh, trying to to be at a place that I, I I can be okay being me. Do you do you think that's a challenge in in the uh, African American culture? Is 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 being just me? Say. I wouldn't say that it's just um, for that specific race because I've worked with a lot of different cultures in corporate America, you know, they're big on diversity. So I've been around yeah. a lot of different cultures. And so I would say that that's just um, prevalent ar around the globe, you know, with everybody. Yeah. Uh, one of my closest friends, she's Hispanic and she, she loves the show. She says to me, you know, that, um, you know, she uh, identifies with this episode or with, you know, being invisible, being overlooked. You know, I talk to uh, Caucasian women that say the same thing. So it's just not, you know, African-American women. It's just not our culture. It's yeah. like I said, it's women all over. So that's why I told you like, it's for it's, it's, it's multicultural. Period. Yeah. Every woman, the, the topics that I do are generally it's general topics that it can strike with anybody. Everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's good. Cause I, I think that a lot of times we, 
uh, embracing each other, even during, I think, you know, the pandemic did a lot, I think, with the time of what people were trying to, uh, you know, we had, a, a, it was a real challenge. Uh, depression went up, skyrocketed. Uh, alcohol, drug use skyrocketed during the pandemic. Uh, and so I think getting back to the place where we can help others find their identity again, right? Because I think we, some of us out there lost our identity through the pandemic. Right. That's because we, you know, some people identified themselves based on who they, what, you know, like, oh, well, I work as a, uh, I don't know, lawyer. So I'm a lawyer. So that's all you knew. So when you didn't have that job to go to, then you didn't know who you were, mm. you know, and that's, that's right. kind of how we lost ourselves. You know, when you are, I'm a, I'm a caretaker, I take care of my grandmother. And when you couldn't get to grandmother, then who are you now? Who are you? Because now you have to look at yourself and say, okay, let me strip this title away from myself. And now who am I? And yeah. And I, and, and you know, you make a very good point because I think sometimes our identity is wrapped up into one, th you know, one thing, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, you know, if you're a lawyer, like you said, or you're a doctor or, or, whatever profession that you uh, do, that is a big part. You know, you see your coworkers, right? Right. So, you know, the, the time period that we broke away from seeing, you know, a lot of our coworkers, uh, we didn't go out as much. And I think we're still recovering from the time span of having that big gap where we didn't have that. Uh, and so getting back to a place of you like yourself helping women, uh, because you know, jealousy, envy is jealousy and envy, uh, across the board, isn't it? It, it yes, doesn't matter. It, what, it doesn't matter what color of skin you have or, or what nationality you are. If you're a jealous person, you're a jealous person. Yes. Right. If you hate right. people, if you hate people, you hate them. Right. So, right. Um, I watched your last episode. I watched your ep last episode, by the way. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, you guys were talking, I, 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 you guys were talking a little bit about, I think on the show you were speaking about envy and jealousy. Right. Yes. yes. And, uh, so if, if you don't mind, I'd like to go back just to, to help the listeners, right? Uh, I tell people, I don't assume everybody knows something, so I'd rather educate you than, than assume that you know something, right? Okay. So, so uh, I know a lot of people, we look at, jealousy and envy and we wrap it into one category but they are actually a very distinct difference you know envy is the painful feeling of wanting what someone else has right right and then if we go to jealousy it is the threat right it is threatened protective of fearful of losing someone's position uh, or feeling jealous that they have it in, and you don't. Right. Uh, now from my perspective, I believe that these are the two things that hold a lot of women, uh, and have to be healed from. I, 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 it's a spirit, right? That, that, spirit of envy is a real spirit that spirit of jealousy is a real spirit um, and I think that you have to be healed from being envy or jealous uh, what do you what do you think produces from your opinion Joyce 
-hmm. what from your opinion what do you what do you think is the leading cause of people being envy i think that it's that you feel a lot of people feel entitled they feel entitled to things that they didn't work for mm -hmm. and so you have somebody that's working for something and they are they finally get what they you know what they worked hard for and then the, another person is looking like well i deserve that i should have that but you didn't put in the work and so or either maybe they did put in some work but they they failed and instead of them trying again they just looked at what somebody else had and just became envious i want what they have but mm. you didn't do what they did you didn't pursue, you know, you weren't persistent, you know, so um, I, I think that that a lot of it is just that um, people need to put in the work. Well, to me, it sounds like today's generation, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I see it all the time, right? This yeah. ge this younger generation. They they feel entitled. I say it they, all the time. They feel entitled. Like uh, I should have it. It should be mine. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's a serious problem. It it mm -hmm. this is not a little issue. This is a serious problem. Um, I I look at this generation probably the worst that I have ever seen when it comes to entitlement. How do you think we can get that turned around, Joyce? Well, I, I think, you know how, how you, you instill in your children, you know, when they're younger, you always say, well, you can be whatever you want to be. You can be whatever you want to be. But you need to add a little more on to that and say, you can be whatever you want to be if you put in the work. If mm -hmm. you, you know, because they just think, oh, I can be whatever I want to be. So that's it. No, that's not it. You have to work hard. You have to put in, you know, your time, your blood, your sweat. You know, you can't just be whatever you want to be. You get what I'm saying? So yep. I'm not trying to say that you can't be who you want to be or what you want to be. I'm saying that you need to finish that sentence and let them know you can be who you want to be when you do the work. <laughs> yes. And I think that's the, uh, I think that's the thing right now when I think about, um, uh, it's going to take individuals like yourself that speak on bringing in individuals like yourself and, and others that talk about how do you get to point A, B, and C. Yeah. And if you don't do A, B, and C, right, right. then this is what the end result is because you didn't do a or b or you felt like you could skip b oh, to get yeah. to c and the internet does that the internet gives them that that uh that look of you can be an overnight success because all you have to do is get enough viewers you get enough people to like your stuff and bam here you are you know now you instant fame because you know we're in a generation where everybody wants things instantly they want things that you know like that said they didn't work for and so the, I, I'm just telling you the internet, I've seen it, you know, happen where, you know, somebody put out something stupid and next, next thing you know, everybody's saying it. It's a trend, you know, period. Uh, what? It's like, you know, so, so now that they have that conception of the misconception of I can become an overnight success. I don't have to do A and B. I don't have to put in the work. All I have to do is just get enough likes. Yeah. And I think that's a very good point. I, I, I appreciate that you took the time to, to uh, speak on that very point. Because I think a lot of times what we see even on, what amazes me is that the entitlement, what we teach on media and TV in that you are entitled to that Michael Core or you're entitled to that Chanel or you're entitled to uh having that and not working for it exactly and it it's a disturbing thing to me because chanel and michael Kor and all of them
their rent is paid and but we have this picture that our identity is wrapped around a Chanel. Our identity is wrapped around a Michael Kors bag. Our identity is wrapped around the red bottom shoes. And how do and then and then but how do I get to the place about what managing my money, finances? Uh, how do I uh, put my money away? How does my money make money? How does my money? Uh, uh, a cure interest, uh, the stock market. These these are the things that we don't talk about to our younger generation. Uh, and what they do see is the fast money. Yeah. On you know this is this is a movie, right? For a lot of these young generation, they see a movie, they see a talk show, or or dating, or relationship, and they think that's reality that. It just comes into play tomorrow. But the real route reality is, is that uh, you're still at a place you can't afford, Micah Court. You're still at a place where you shouldn't buy a Chanel. You're at a place where you shouldn't be spending what you don't have. These are the things we should be teaching. That's uh, true. Right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, I tell everybody, you know, uh, there are some people that have no business uh, going in debt, trying to represent and being something that they're not. And this is what we were talking about. What? Your identity. What is your, what is the identity that we're teaching about finding yourself, being happy about who you are, who God created you to be? your talents, your values. Uh, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a real point, I think, that we have to find the leaderships like yourself, yeah. Joyce, like yourself, and, and saying, listen, let's get back and talk about the issues that are really affecting why we're in the spot we're at. You know, uh, why are we still five, ten years later, choosing not to learn about finance or choosing not to learn about budgeting. So, right. uh, because we can talk about all day long. I tell people all the time, I see people all the time. One year they're going to talk about, hey, I, you know, I'm going to this conference about money. And five years later, they're still broke in the same place. Uh, they didn't learn anything. They didn't learn anything. Yeah. So I, I think that's... Uh, but you make a very good point. You make a very good point uh, on the envy. Uh, let me ask you about the jealousy. Why do you think uh, when it comes to the jealousy, uh, why do you think it's such a... Uh, I call them strongholds because I tell everybody, if you're still doing something mm -hmm. that has, you have not changed, then you have a stronghold on your life. I think that some people don't realize that they have a jealous, you know, that they're all jealous, that they have a jealous tendency. And so they just think, you know, I would say, for instance, you can, what, you, what's the word that when they say, oh, the thing when they say ignorance is bliss, is bliss. Yeah. So when you don't know, you just, you know, you really don't, sometimes you don't even know. You just know that I don't like that person. You're disguised as, oh, I don't like her. I don't like him. I don't like them. And you don't have any real reason for not liking that person. Like no legitimate excuse. It's just jealousy. Like, that's it. That's the underlying thing that you don't even realize that you don't like them because you're jealous. Most cases, that's what it is. And you can't even identify, you can't even pinpoint anything that that person has done against you. I just don't like them. And it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just jealousy. It's underlining jealousy. That is the root of it. And so when you realize that, okay, 
I'm, I, I see what it is. I know what it is. Let me do better. You have to accept what it is and do better. That's, that's what I have. <laughs> well, I think, I think that is, uh, but see, I, I'm a big believer now, you know, I, uh, I'm a big believer that some of the things like we were talking about the jealousy and envy that some of those things, unless you get healed from it. And when I say healed, I mean like healed, not, not like, Oh, we went and we had prayer and, 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 you know, right. next week you're right back to the place where you were. But how are you uh, going to get healing when you don't even realize you have an issue? Well, I think one of the things when it comes to the aspect of we all uh, at some point are at a place where if you are a person, let's just say you say that you are a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. Or you believe in the kingdom. Now, there's two differences between the kingdom and the religious, right? Now, I'm not going to get into church today, but there is a difference between kingdom-minded and religious-minded. Yes. Because when we talk about kingdom, we're talking about the ability to go to the source. Who is the source? It's the creator, Jesus, right? God, our, our, the, the one who created and made everything and existed everything to be is in his hands. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to jealousy, people know if they are a jealous person. It, there, is, there is not, I don't believe that people walk around and not know that because it's an emotional feeling that you have right it's a it's it's when you wake up and you have that internal feeling and it says to you i don't like them right because if we're all human beings we have the capability of what is self-evaluating we do it every single human being being has the ability to self-evaluate themselves. They do. And that's what, you know, how you were, you know, how you were talking about, we had that time during COVID to reflect on ourselves. And I think that when people got a chance to stop running and stop hanging out with people and stop doing other things, their, their everyday lives, then they did have that time to reflect. And they found some things that they just didn't like. Or they realized that they didn't even know what was there. You know, I remember, um, for example, I, I, I had, um, let's see, how did I put it? Um, okay, so I had somebody hurt me and, and it hurt. And so I thought to myself, I was like, you know what? I, I went through the step A, B, and C, and I was like, I'm healed. I'm over it. It's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was actually on one of my episodes. I talked about it. And I said, and then one day I had to drive down the street by the residents and and I was just just going that way was so familiar you know and it was just like and it brought up everything that I had gone through with them and mm. I was just like and I was an emotional wreck like to the point where I was just kind of like I'm shaking I'm driving I'm really affected by this and I realized there's still some residue there and so it just lets me know that even though sometimes you think that you're healed you may not always be healed so that's what I'm telling you like it's 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 like I in my head I thought okay I'm not I'm not I'm not still holding them hostage I've forgiven them it's over I'm, you know not over but you know what I'm saying like I put it in the past I'm okay you know I can move forward but then when that moment happened I realized I'm not healed and that right. took me going back revisiting um you know I, I didn't go to their place but I was revisiting a street that was familiar that it was just kind of like I'm not healed and so everybody hasn't realized that they have an issue. Everybody hasn't realized that they still need healing because in their head, they, they've overcome that. They've, they've gotten a t-shirt. They've gotten, you know, they, they went through the steps. They've gotten it. They're like, I'm, I'm here now. And you don't even realize that you, you haven't.
you're still raw. You, you still need more healing. And it's just, yeah. So I don't think that it's just that people just wake up knowing that they're still jealous, that they still have that jealousy going on because a lot of people don't, they just think, Oh, like, you know, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm over that. I'm healed from that. And mm-hmm. they're, not. they're not, they're not, they're not. And I'm going to go back to, uh, you know, so I w- I'm going to go back and, and have an opportunity here and, I want to pull this scripture out because I want I want to to help people who are listening to this and understand how do I know if I'm free of something? Oh, right? okay. How do you know that you are free of something? If you go back to John thirty six, Jesus made a wonderful statement, right? And I want you guys to listen to this. I'm going to repeat this two times so you don't miss it. In the statement, he said, so if the sun sets you free, right? Who did the setting free? The sun, right? He is the one who set you free, right? Mm -hmm. What happens if you know if you've been free or not is religious practices or people, just because you go to church and you pray does not mean that you are free of something. You can go to church. There are people who go uh, go to church every day and then go to casino one hour later. There are people that go to church and they pray and they come home and they cuss their neighbor out, right? Just yeah. because you go to a building does not make you free. He said, he who the sun sets free, right? So it is the Holy Spirit that breaks the chain that you cannot break. It is the source that breaks the chain. So if you're still walking in jealousy or envy, you need to know that you need to go back to what? The source. Right. And say, Father, I am not free. Allow the Holy Spirit to come take this away from me. Because you do not want to be an individual out there that has these two things hanging over your head. Envy and jealousy will cripple your walk for a long time. And if you don't get this off of you, then every opportunity will be sabotaged. Because people who invest in people have to see what you're worth investing in. Right. See, no one invests in something Did not do- that is not going to be a return in their investment. That's even in my friendships, Joyce. Mm-hmm. My wife will tell you, it's really hard to be a friend of Alexander. It's really hard. Because I set a standard if you say that you're with me, I need to see it. If, if you say you're going to be a doer, I need to see it. Right. If you say that you believe of my vision, I need to see it. If you believe that you are going to support me, I need to see it in the good times and the bad times. I don't need a friend that tells me something just because it sounds good. I need a friend that's going to bring transparency, honesty, and that feeling that is called constructive criticism. Exactly. You don't want uh, friends that are yes people. Like they said, a yes man is always agreeing with everything you do. You want somebody to help hold you accountable so that they, you know, if you're doing wrong, you're wrong. 
Yes. You know, if you point out, you know, you want somebody to not only, like I said, to not only boost you up, but to also let you know, hey, this is not right. Hey, you know, I don't think you should do this, that kind of thing. Like I said, to help hold you accountable, because that's what a real friend does. A real friend doesn't agree with everything that you do, you know, knowing that you're wrong and they don't uphold you in your wrongness. And 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 that's I, I think that's the thing that we hold on to people that weigh us down more because here's here's what i would say to a lot of individuals joyce we hold on to people longer than we should we that hold on one of my episodes for next season that right? is finances i'm telling you yes holding on yes you're right mm -hmm. because a lot of times the very person that we're holding on to is a weight to our process. They are a hold back to the thing that could be moved in a faster rate than it's moving, but because we hold on to them, because we want to believe that they're not that way. We want to believe that they will change. We want to believe my time is valuable. I tell everybody, listen, my time is valuable. If, if you, uh, I work with lots of pastors and leadership. My time is valuable. If you call me in here to help you and consult you and change things around, don't waste my time. This is what I need, A, B, and C. And you'll find out real fast how many times people will not want to change because they don't want to be confronted with the change. And so uh, I think because, that that's because change is scary and, yeah. and being and being, uh, you know, even if it's something wrong and it's familiar, you know, it's I think I said that on one of my episodes. It's like, even if it's something wrong, it's familiar. So you're okay. You're like, okay, I know this is chaotic, but it's familiar. And, and you, you, you know, you embrace the familiar. Cause like you're saying, change is scary. It, it, it is, but okay. I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, 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 no. You're absolutely right. Change, change is scary. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, everyone who knows myself, Joy's, knows I'm a black and white person. I don't move. When I say yes, I mean yes. When I mean no, I mean no. If I'm going to support you, I'm going to support you. Not based off of what credentials you can give me. Because I tell everybody, guys, listen, I've met plenty of pastors in my life with lots of credentials, doctors, right? Mm -hmm. People with PhDs. I have a doctor that's coming on next week, right? Very educated. I didn't, she didn't come on, she's not coming on my show because I, because I saw some PhD in, in her credentials. Right. She's coming on right. my show because when we talk, we are talking to each other like in just everyday individuals. I respect her for who she is. She doesn't want to be lifted up like something special. She just wants to be talked to like an ordinary person. Yes. And so I don't, again, I look at the heart. So when I brought you onto the podcast, I wanted you to know that Joyce, you're doing a good thing. You're Thank changing you. lives. You're making a difference. You're making a difference in your family. If you believe it, even in your own family, there are people in your family, Joyce, that are looking at you. You are the example and they are the sponge that absorbs what you are doing in this very minute. They are the sponges that will take what you are doing now and they will pass it to the next generation. They are the generation that when they look at you, Joyce, 
They see your heart. They see what you're doing in spite of what everybody else is talking about. Let me tell you what. Our children know when people talk about their mom or dad. They know. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they know when family members are jealous. They know when family members don't support. They know when family members are talking about them, right? Yeah. But you moved in in spite of all that was going on. You made the choice and the will to go on and make a difference on your show. And I, <clears throat> and I think you are doing something great. My encouragement to you is that if nobody supports you, there's one person who always will support you, and that's Jesus. If nobody else opens the door for you, there's a king that opens up all doors. Yes. yes. And he is Jesus. Yes. There is an appointed time and place that it's about relationships. When I connect with people and work with people, I look at the relationship before I look at the opportunity. Because the opportunity is always going to be there. But the relationship is what we control. Nobody else controls that. The relationship that you're going to move in this next season, Joyce, whoever it may be, it's going to be about you making the decisions on the relationships that you are going to hold on to or let go of. Right. How fast you get to the finish line is not dependent on other people. How fast you get to the finish line is dependent on soul yourself because either you drag, you allow people to drag you or you let them go and you move into your purpose. And there, that's why I believe at the end of the day, you know, we always talk about the eagle. The eagle flies by himself. Right. Right? But see, what we don't talk about is the emotional side that goes through that while we're climbing up the hill. There's an emotional side as leaders that every leader can relate to when it comes to flying is the emotional side to let go of that side when no one supported you, to let go of the things that you thought someone was going to do for you, and they didn't right. do it. Right, exactly, exactly. Right, that's a real emotional feeling. Yeah. Right? I can look at, I, you know, my wife, I, you know, I, 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 I you know, and, and I don't, I don't, there's no, this is transparency. So I tell everybody, there's nothing that I hide from anybody. Let me tell you what. I saw my wife work her tail off for seven years and build a salon. She had to let that thing go. And out of all the seven years, Joyce, and this is, I, I'm saying this because I want to make a point. In seven years, Joyce, including family members, all the people, do you know in seven years, a person that counseled people, poured out, listened to people, do you, under, do you realize she did not get a single phone call why she closed the salon. Wow. Not a, I'm sorry to hear you closing. Oh my God, what can I do? Is there, do you want me to, in seven years. So what I tell people is that don't tell me that we're not at a place where this is an issue about support because it's a real issue. In yeah. seven years, 
you not have one person have the audacity to pick up the phone to say, do you just want to talk? Do you want to just have a real conversation? I know that has to hurt. See, the odds is highly stacked. Mm -hmm. About, about the black community really supporting each other because these are the things we don't want to really address. These are the things we don't want to admit. But you have the opportunity to understand that you have the, you right now, Joyce, you have that opportunity to help these women to break those chains. Your voice can help break tradition. Your voice can break cur the generational curses of hate, separation, jealousy, envy. Your voice, Joyce, can be that very voice that helps break that hatred. Because at the end of the day, we need individuals like yourselves to speak up. We need individuals like you say, I'm going to stand bold in, in my position on my show so I can help somebody break that curse and break that line. Right. Because right. we can talk about having a show and, and talking good stuff, but listen, we want impact. I believe at the end of the day, Joyce, you want impact on your show. You want to know I that. Do. I do. Right? Right. And I, I had somebody tell me, that um and it was just it was you know it was um they said you're not gonna go far on your show with your show and because there's no fighting and there's no nudity people like conflict and they like naked oh. people and so yeah. I said, th I said, thank you for your feedback. But, um, and I said, and I said, and also thank you for your support because I know you had to have watched the show to know there was no fighting and no nudity. So wow. thank you for watching. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, you know what? Let me tell you what, Joyce, that, that, but see what that did was that helped you, motivated you mm -hmm. to realize no devil, I'm going to put you under my feet and I am going to have a show. It will be prosperous and it will be yep. a show that is going to be impacting. It will be a show. I'm a woman of integrity. I don't have right. to get naked and I don't have to fight and I'm not going to have guests on my show that does that. Yeah. And I, and I'm proud. <laughs> and let me, let me, let me say that I, I am, I am glad that you, uh, and, and a lot of other people. I mean, a lot of other people out there that are going to applaud you for taking the stand that you don't have to have that to be impacting. Correct. You don't have to have that. That's what society says. But mothers you're a mother yes right the first yes, sole responsibility is to be the leader in your home and you don't have to have that type of show to be impacting so i just i i'm thankful and and i'm glad to hear that you ch are choosing to move forward without having to feel that you have to have profanity or you have to be naked or people have to have the boobs out, right? Right. You, you have the ability to say, listen, I'm going to make an impact in my community and of the people that I reach, let me say this much. Joyce, you know, there are there are people who are going to listen to this podcast in their bathtub, in the car. They're going to listen to the podcast some point during the day. Right. Right. 
my sole mission in everything I do is about the one. I don't do this show because I have millions of uh, letters coming in. I don't do this show because my ratings are on the top of Apple or, or all those other things. And I tell everybody that my focus is not that. My focus is to make sure that if one person's life yes. gets to be touched because I had you on the show and someone out there that is listening that is, cha- is going through the challenges and saying, I am that woman. See, I don't have to be jealous of someone's show. I don't have to be jealous of someone else's podcast. Right, exactly. It's not my show. What am I being jealous about? I have my own show. (laughs) Right? I there's that's why I told people jealousy. If you don't, you don't have to be jealous. Even if you don't have your own show, you don't have to be jealous. But you know, you have an opportunity to do what you do. So so if you're doing something and whether it is your own podcast or whether it is your own, you know, whatever you got going on, do your thing and people are going to support that. So you don't have to be jealous of, you know, other people, what they have. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've never, let me tell you, I've never gotten the aspect of being jealous of someone else's show because for me, whatever is for me, mm-hmm. Jesus has got my back either with or without you. Jesus is going to open the door. He's going to open the door with your support or without your support. Because at the end of the day, my voice and the choices that I make and the people that I bring onto this podcast is based off what I see in them, not what they have, not what they, they portray to, to be, but what I evidently can see who they are. I I can see joy on your life, Joyce. Thank you. I can see that you are a person that you, everybody, I don't care who you are, everybody needs somebody, some encouraging along the way. We are human beings. We are, we are people who have emotions and feelings. And sometimes it's just a good to say, oh, my God. They thought of enough of me (laughs) in what I was doing to bring me on. That's right. I bring on counselors. I bring in people with it doesn't it doesn't matter. What matters to me is what I see evident. That's who I bring on to the show. And so I just, Joy, I just want you to know. You keep Mm -hmm. doing and you keep getting to that place. Yes. That you know that at the end of the day that you are making an example that's what we need more of. Thank you. We need examples. We have a lot of people doing a lot of stuff with no movement. That doesn't change anything. You can be a busybody and accomplish nothing. I see it all the time. I, I, I counsel, was going to say, I've seen it happen. Yep, seen it happen. Yes. I counsel people. I, 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 I consult with people all the time, all walks of life, all professions. doesn't mean that they're accomplishing anything. I've worked with pastors that are regional pastors for big churches that absolutely did nothing. And they had PhDs and doctor's degree. And as dumb as a box of rocks. Right? And I've met other people who are extremely talented, didn't have the PhD, didn't have the recognition, and they were extremely gifted. Right. Right. It's like um, 
I, I, I met this uh, gentleman and he was, uh, he's a mechanic by trade. And so he, his uh, dad taught him how to fix cars. He didn't go to school. He don't have a degree, you know, the certification, but he's very good at what he does. So he doesn't have the certification, but he's very good. And then, you know, you get, you go to the auto body shop and then you have those mechanics with the certification that'll completely tear up your car, you know? So it just made me think about that when you were talking about degrees and uh, titles, you know, somebody that doesn't have a title can be just as talented, if not more talented than someone with the title, with the degree. Yes. And let me let me say this, and my it, it and I and everybody it, listen. This show is about you know I bring news about family, faith, and community. One thing that I tell everybody, in this is, and, and I know this is going to shock a lot of people. Do you understand them in my walk? That in my lifetime that one thing i've learned that you cannot get from a degree no matter how much money you spent no matter how high if it's doctors or uh, masters or whatever degree that you go for Mm -hmm. the one thing you cannot get through a piece of paper is the anointing yes and see, a lot of people have a hard time understanding this. The anointing cannot be bought. And it cannot be sold. Because those who carry the anointing, it does not matter about the degree. The reason why a lot of people are held back, Joyce, is because they look at the degree before they look at the anointing. Right. And the person that the Spirit of the Lord could have blessed them with, they canceled it because they looked at the paper instead of the anointed gift that they had already possessed. See, we don't talk about this in our local church. Society is full of people who only look at a piece of paper. Right. You're right. And the sad part is, is that you cancel the very thing that could have elevated you if you would have just looked at the person instead of that piece of paper, that degree. And I've learned this throughout my whole life. Favor is better than any piece of paper. Oh, favor, yes. <laughs> favor will give you the open doors in spite of what you have financially or educationally. Favor will open the door to expand territories if you have or do not have. The anointing already knows the positioning to where to put you in the hour, minute, and second. So that's why I wanted you to know Mm -hmm. that at the end of the day, I'm excited because you, 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 it takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of will. Yes. People, people don't stop to realize to that person, they've put everything they have behind it. Maybe it ain't much to you. Maybe it's not what you see it. Oh, my goodness. You know how people talk. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, you know. I mean, I wouldn't right. do it that way. You know, I wouldn't. I mean, why doesn't she do it this way? I mean, a look, a look, a look at what she should have done. Oh, right? my gosh. I've gotten that. I've gotten, oh, I thought your show was going to be like this. Or I thought you were going to do that. Or why don't you? And, and I said, and I just, I'll, you know, say, well, thank you for your feedback. Because I want people to know that, you know, I, I do, you know, take, thank you for your feedback. That's, that's what I'll say. Thank you for your feedback. You know, I don't want people to feel like I, that their opinion is not valued, but at the same time, 
I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing unless it's really good advice. But in, in other words, most of it is just what they think that I should do, what they should, what they would have done. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if you would have done this, if you would have done that, I still don't see you doing anything. What are you would have, should have, could have done. So I'm just, yeah. So I just say thank you for your feedback and, and keep it moving. <laughs> well, I, you know, everyone who knows me, I, you know, Joyce, I, I'm a type, you know, if, if, if you don't have something positive to say, then don't say it all. I, I like constructive criticism. Don't get me wrong. I like constructive criticism, but I don't like when you're trying to, um, what's the word? rain on my parade when you're trying yes. to when i'm happy and you're just like oh she's too happy let me throw this on her you know put a little rain cloud over what she got going on and so there's there is a big difference between you encouraging somebody to to do better or are you critiquing somebody to tear them down yes and i think it's how we say it it's it's our approach in how we say something because a lot of times people have a hard time understanding there's a difference between constructive criticism yes and and then just being blatantly tearing someone in in what they have out of into pieces because it makes you feel better and and that's the part that that I tell everybody there are people who they get a joy and a high of tearing people down. That is true. If you if you don't think there is, you're fooling yourself. There are people who wake up in the morning with the purpose of finding fault into people all the day long. So that's why you have to be able to identify is this person when they are giving constructive criticism it's always should be supported with a structure of identifying the problem and then nicely giving nice suggestions right how you could do it better right they, that's that's constructive criticism is loving in a way that you're not tearing them and you have nothing nice to say behind it and and I tell people you if you have those people in your life get rid of them because if they if they are fault finders all the time that's who they are so you're going to have fault finders all the time I don't I don't have time for fault finders I tell everybody you, you if if that's all you got to do at the end of the day is to find something that's wrong with what I'm doing then then there's nothing that you're going to add to my relationship so uh, so, Joy, I, tell, I mean, tell everybody, uh, I guess, what days are you on and, and and tell everyone your information, I guess, what hours, what days does The Invisible Woman come on? It airs on Mondays at 7 Central Standard Time. Um, you can go to my website, which is jwinvisiblewoman.com and watch it live there. It's on Twitch. It's also on uh, Facebook um, and you can catch it on my, um, you, on YouTube. You can catch it on YouTube. You can catch it on, let's see what other, uh, I was going to say Instagram. It's on, it's, I mean, I have at least like five, six different platforms that it's on, but definitely if you can't find it anywhere else, you can definitely find it on YouTube, the Invisible Woman Talk Show, or you can go to jwinvisiblewoman.com and watch it live from my website. So if you get lost, oh, I don't know where to find it. YouTube, the Invisible Woman Talk Show, jw, jwinvisiblewoman.com, my website, you can always find it there. Yeah, and and, and remember, put the invisible woman show because yeah, talk show. it has to be I mean, an invisible woman talk show talk invisible. show yeah 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 because i i went to look up the show on youtube mm -hmm. right and i said the invisible woman right <laughs> it, yeah. it, it, it came up with like a million invisible women right right <laughs> so i'm like oh lord there's got to be something in there right so yeah. uh that and that's why i'm saying that because yeah i, I say I, that I, to people all the time it's the invisible woman talk show because yeah. like you said it's gonna pull up some other women that's not me the invisible yeah. woman. <laughs> yeah well we want the we, we want the joyce invisible woman exactly yeah. 
No, I I appreciate you coming on to the to the podcast. I I I tell everybody, you know, it, it it's it's great to support people. It's great to to encourage it one is, another. It is. And yes. you know, I this this is uh this is what I, you know, you know, I, I wake up every day. My vision, you know, is to to wake up and and do this full time and um you know, I've I've had the pleasure of of meeting all walks of life uh, mm-hmm. in my walk, and and from all lives, and, and and I can tell you that it doesn't matter, guys, if you're a doctor, if you're that janitor. Jesus has a plan for you. Yes, it, I agree. It, do, it, it doesn't matter what your what your background is, what what where you came from which you don't think anyone would accept you as. There is hope in Jesus. There is a hope knowing that there is a purpose that you were created for. And if I'm talking to someone, I want you to most importantly believe in yourself because everything starts right there with self yeah self-believing right there's a scripture in the bible that says a man that doubts right is tossed to and fro right Mm -hmm. you have to believe in yourself you have to believe that what god is doing in this hour i you have to believe that a year from now I would be excited. Let me put this on. If uh-huh. if I see you on a year from now, and you get to be on ten different platforms, I'm gonna say, guys, let me tell you what I had her on my podcast. <laughs> right. 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 And I'm gonna be able to say that too. I was on the bare truth. I was on the bare truth. So. Yes. So. Guys, the the one thing that uh, the listeners know at least about myself is that they know that I am about seeing other people prosper. That yes. I'm excited when I get to see someone advance. I'm excited yes. when I get to see doors open in other people's lives. Because... The one thing is that this life is a blink of an eye and it's over. You don't have, we don't have time to deal with things that are insufficiently any importance about being jealous or envious or taking time not supporting people. You don't have time for that. You have time that you have a limited time to do kingdom business. And so make the most of every day. I, I'm a night owl. I, there's days that I sleep very little because there's things to do. I understand. Somebody told me CEOs don't get much sleep. (laughs) Business owners don't get much sleep. So when we're, when we're doing things like this, you know, sleep is kind of last. It, it is what it is. You know, I'm up like late night sometimes, you know, working on my show because my show is pre-taped. You know, it doesn't go live. It, it's it's a talk show. Talk shows yeah. are live. They're pre-taped. And so I do that and, and putting everything together and, you know, then uploading everything to, you know, to the platforms. It's just it's a lot of work and trying to get everything. Yeah, it's you know, you understand it's work. And not only not with your show, but you have your other things in your life too that you have going on. So it is work. Yeah, and and I and I think more importantly, I'll say this, and then and then we could go. The most important, I think, for myself, Joy, is that Joyce, I never want to be at a place that I've lost the joy. Mm, yeah. I never want to be a place where it does not bring happiness 
in what I'm doing. I'd rather shut it down and close it to do something that is not bring joy either in my life or other people's lives. And I, and I had this conversation the other day. Sometimes in life, we have to look back and ask ourselves, why are we doing what we're doing? Because it's easy with outside voices to clutter our emotional side. Mm -hmm. about things such as why are we doing it. So I've been blessed in my life, even in my jobs and careers. I have never woke up in 30-some years and said I hate what I'm doing. I don't like what I'm doing. In 30-some years, I can honestly sit here and tell you I've never woke up and not have joy in what I'm doing. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's a testimony that many don't have, including myself. Um, I, I love what I'm doing now, but yeah, <laughs> it's like not always, but yeah, I do love what I'm doing now. So, and, uh, so if you don't mind, can I pray for you real quick? Please, thank you so much. Uh, awesome. The, the, so we just thank you, Father, for allowing Joyce to come on to the podcast this morning. We just believe that you are going to do great things in this hour yes. with uh, Joyce and that the invisible woman, Father God, you gave her the vision. And Father God, we just ask that you would bless yes. Joyce with the ability to continue to pursue the run. It's not how fast we get to the finish line. It's about the pursuit. It's about lives being changed. It's about impacting our communities. It's about understanding we are all one body. We go, regardless of our race, color, or creed, that we are all needed of a Savior. Yes. Allow her to be used as a vessel, as an instrument on the earth. Guide her, allow her, allow the word and you, Lord, to be the compass, the focus to the destination to where you want her to be. Put people financially, supporters yes. in her life. Lead her to leaders. Allow them to lead by example. Allow her to have her vision fulfilled by the promise, not by the qualifications but by the promise that you would never leave us or forsake us. Yes, God. That you would never forget that we are in the palm of your hand. We are the apple of your eye. You are the one who created us out of the dirt, and you are the one who will return us back to the dirt. But you thought of us enough to give us a plan a destiny, a purpose. And we ask that, Lord, you would just bless the invisible woman. May every door from the east, west, south, north be opened. May she encounter people of all cultures. May they see the heart, the vision, and see that this is a good seed. This is good ground to invest in. Yes. Challenge her, mold her, into a leader. Allow her to be pruned, crushed, to make her to the place that you already designed her to be. Allow her to digest the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding yeah. from people 
who will lead her, guide her. May she be able to be a person that finds humility in her life. Allow it to be the focus of her mission in this hour, Lord, to touch lost women, the broken, the lost, those who see themselves invisible, those who do not see themselves worthy, those who do not see themselves as someone special, someone who has been broken and lost by the world, and allow this invisible woman joyce to be the light into others lives that father if you saw her valuable worthy to be saved allow her light to shine in all corners allow her vision to be expanded not just community in her local community but but allow her vision to be fulfilled in all corners and expand her territories. Allow her to be able to grow into something that you've already promised her to be, and that is to be a vessel, to be the light, to be the example, to be the representative. In this we pray, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you so much for that prayer. Thank you. Well, I'm excited for you. I mean, hey, I like I say, I, I'm 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 believing a year from now. Hey, you know, you you get to the place where you know you're you're making an impact, and um, yes, that that for me, and, and if you, if anything, you know, I tell everybody, I'm I'm only, uh, uh, you know, I'm only a Facebook message or, or a, a way. And yeah, I can't tell you I have all the answers. I tell everybody, I don't have all the answers. But I can at least give you an answer where I've been. I can't give you an answer somewhere I haven't been. I can give you an answer where I have been. And so, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share before before we head off? I mean, your favorite Um, coffee or breakfast (laughs) item or... Oh gosh, let me see. Um, favorite breakfast? I, okay, I'm I'm in the point right now. I just love chicken. I don't know, chicken's okay. my favorite, and I don't care. Like, not, I don't care, but like chicken, it can be baked, it can be fried, it can be boiled. It's just chicken. So I don't know what's going on with me right now, but I'm on to some chicken. <laughs> so that's my thing. Yeah, my favorite food, chicken. <laughs> well, I I like chicken. I let me tell you what, the chicken's gone up in price. I, I yeah, it has. I, I need to get some chickens, uh, chicken coops, and, and raise my own chickens. Well, that's oh, good. What, what's some? What's something that people don't know about you, Joyce? That that would shock a lot of people. Oh my gosh, that I'm shy. You're shy. Okay. <laughs> I'm shy. People would like when I say that to people, I'd be like, "I'm really shy," and they'd be like, "No, you're not, because you just, you know, you have this personality, just, you know." But yeah, like I'm really shy. <laughs> I guess like yeah but it, when it comes to what I'm passionate about I'm not shy so that's why people think I'm not shy but I really am I'm really kind of okay. shy yeah shocker <laughs> you've met me you've been in my presence and yeah you- yeah yeah <laughs> you know I I'm in fact and you know I I tell everybody in fact the last time I saw Joyce now a lot of people they may, may be like oh my goodness what a crazy man you know, I, I saw Joyce, uh, uh, you know, at a uh, event we had, baby shower. Yep, baby for you guys shower. that don't know that you guys don't know. And, in fact, I, I think we gave her a hug. I didn't conversate a whole lot because I'm a watcher. I, I, a lot of people know know who I am. I, I, I do a lot of watching. Mm-hmm. And... So when I, uh, but I, I, I knew you, you, you were a pretty reserved person. Uh, but I also knew, you know, coming and seeing the show, um, you, you come out of your shell. Let me say that. You know, you know, hermit crabs, you ever seen a hermit crab? 
not in person, but yeah, I've seen them on TV. Well, let me tell you what. They're pretty interesting. A hermit crab stays in the shell, right? But then eventually it pops out, right? Mm -hmm. Searching, right? They search for their food. And uh, I believe that this is going to be one of the things that the Lord is going to do is stretch you in this next season. And when I say stretch, there are going to be things outside people who you're going to meet that will challenge you and stretch you for the better. Because what I've learned about leadership doesn't matter. I, a lot of people could say, oh my goodness, he's a great leader. But do you know that I watch a where they started, the challenges, the things they overcame to be a better leader. Because, see, we never really want to be a place where we think we got it figured out. Because the moment right. you do, the Lord's a good Lord to remind you, you ain't got it figured out yet. Right. So I consistently learn from other leaders so that I can be a better leader to leaders. And... Uh, so I tell everybody, you know, that, hey, this is a, this walk is one day at a time. Okay. Day at a time, right? I can't control other people. I can't control the haters. I can't right. try control the gossipers and the people who, who talk about me or talk about my wife or talk about where we're going or what we're doing. I can't control none of that. No, you can't, but you can control your response. Yes. Control so, you. That's right. And so I've tried to always, um, look at that. If, if I can, if I can look at, if I have a lot of haters, then it must be that we're doing something right. See, when you, when you are hated and talked about, then you're making change. Mm, you're making okay. an impact. The enemy does not deal with the couch potato. He True. deals with he deals with the people that are impacting people's lives. So he want his mission is to disrupt and abort the mission. If he can get you affected by what people say enough. Yeah. abort the mission if you don't get the support that you thought you should have you might abort the mission and see I, I've said that I told my husband um, I was well, I think it was episode uh, the episode I was doing the uh, about the weight on me and I asked a couple of people to be on the show I even addressed that in my show and I asked a couple of people to be on the show and nobody wanted to talk on the show they didn't want to talk about it it was like mm -mm, we don't want to talk about that and I told my husband I said you know what I'm gonna do the show with or without a guest it goes on because this is my baby this is the vision that I was given and it's not based on who's on the show who helps you produce the show who helps you, you know do this it's, it wasn't based on those qualifications of what, you know, those restrictions. It was, you do this. And so I did it. But, you know, I do some episodes, there's no guest. I'm still going to do it. <laughs> well, we applaud you. Oh, my goodness. Thank we're ex you. We're excited over there about hearing that. We're excited. No, I, I think uh, I tip my hat, and I'm, I'm thankful that you pressed through. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the pressing is, 
is the hardest part to get through. Uh, because the pressing comes with the emotional side, our feeling, our, our senses of emotional, right? Yeah. So that pressing and overcoming it is the hardest. You know, I'm a human being. I tell everybody I have feelings and emotions just like everybody else. I'm not, I'm not emotionless. I'm not, uh, I've just learned that some things are not worth my energy or time. And if I allow those things to pollute the way that I'm thinking, then I can't move into the next level because I'm still in a place of that word or what was said to affect. And that's, right. and that's, that's the part that we don't, we don't talk about those things. But these are real things that we go through, individuals go through. Anytime you're launching, anytime you're trying to birth something, because the likelihood of people really coming on board, you have to go through one in a million. Now, I tell everybody, uh, in my lifetime, I have had lots of people who are, not lots, I've had a few people who have been millionaires in my life. Mm -hmm. And they they enjoyed who I was because I didn't see them as millionaires. I saw them as individuals. Right. Humans. Right. Because we see individuals with money and we think, oh, they don't have no problems. No, they just have different kinds of problems. You know, they have family members always knocking at the door because they think they're a bank, right? So they just have different kinds of problems. So we're all needed. We're all needing somebody. We all need support. We all need encouragement. And so at the end of the day, uh, I'm just thankful that you were able to come on. Um, excuse me. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure to be on the show today. Yes. And, <laughs> and guys, no, you're good. You're good. I'm going to, uh, go ahead and, uh, we're going to close the show out. I, I tell everybody, this is my show. It can run as long as it wants to, run. but I'm going to go ahead and close out guys. Uh, at the end of the day, I thank you guys for jumping on. Uh, please follow. If you're a woman out there, you're re-listening to this broadcast. Uh, please go and visit The Invisible Woman on YouTube. She can be found on Facebook. Uh, and so if you guys would like to be on the Bear Truth podcast, uh, please in inbox me or reach out to me uh, via Facebook, email. Uh, I can be on found on uh Podbean, Apple, uh, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, etc., etc. And uh, if you guys, again, if there's someone out there that would like to uh, receive counseling, if it's premarital marriage, or you have mental issues that you would like me to contact you, please also inbox me uh, and. I will give you my availability. And uh, again, Joyce, thank you for joining and thank being you. on the show. We will catch you next time. Please, I, hopefully down the road, you can come back on the show. And I, I, next time, I want, I want you to be on the show. And I just want you just to share all the testimonies. That's what was going to happen. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be amazing. Yes. I'm, I'm really ready for that. Yeah. Yes. I'm excited well, about that. Yeah. <laughs>
so until next time guys i appreciate you guys and uh again uh until next time we will see you guys have a great great day god bless